So it's the start of a new season and we have a chance to win some silverware we've never won before. Which is weird. Roll the intro. Hello and welcome back to the NK Zagreb save and we're in the Croatian Super Cup. Now I, I'm confused because we've never played in a Croatian Super Cup before. There wasn't one that season. There wasn't one that season. And there wasn't one that season. And it confuses me because we won the league and the cup these two years. So I'm going to assume the rule is if the same team wins both, then you just it just gets cancelled. They don't have like a person that comes second, plays it, or the runner-up in it, or whatever. It just gets cancelled, which is a little bit strange. So, yeah. I mean, it's told us we've won it. I assume, yeah, you just get a natural... There isn't a game. There just wasn't a game. So I assume we just we just win it. We've, we've just won the Super Cup because we'd be playing each other. So we just win it. I mean, very bizarre. But I'm always up for silverware. So it's, it is the start of a new season, but it is also in the transfer window. And um, only a few little things have happened, which is why we haven't had a transfer window episode. As such, there's lots of bids going on. Um, as you can see, most of them low knees going out. The main ones to discuss, uh, Chris Laughlin has joined Solin uh, for 350k. So he's dropped down to the second league. Just wasn't going to get any game time with us. I thought I'd cash in 350k. And Vinko Peritin, we've managed to sell him again. Um, and he's moved back to the championship again. Last time we got a million pounds from this time we get a much more uh, realistic fee, I'd say. Uh, it'll be 245k when he plays 50 games for Lincoln. And I think... To be honest, he was crap for the last two years, so more than happy to cash in. Um, he's just not needed around the club. It's a team leader gone, but I'll take the money for him, according that we brought him back on a free. So, yeah, I mean, hopefully he, his level is at the championship, hopefully, and he does score um, quite a few goals. We've had a few low knees and a few free transfers go out as well. We've bought in, well, to be honest, I haven't bought in anybody. Ian Allen and Brett Higgins are bought in. These guys here, so Graziano Canino um, has joined. Another option at holding midfield and command. Looks like he could be pr pretty useful um, for us. Nine, uh, £975,000, so really not that much. Not breaking the bank. Uh, Diego Cabrera comes in. He's an attacking midfielder, bought for his potential ability. Will be trained up to be a Mazala in that role that we like to use there, which I haven't actually set yet. Um, so let's go ahead and do that now. Midfield centre, Mazala on attack. And... Uh, David Tutic comes in, a, a new goalkeeper for the for the under 19s. That's where he'll be playing most of this season coming up. Um, but just another option. We're lacking a little bit in goalkeepers, so looking to get a few more youngsters in. As I said before, our youngsters aren't necessarily the best, so we're looking to sort of supplement what we've got with bringing in foreign young talent. And now we can only sign foreign young talent when they're 18, so that was already a bit of a banana skin. But you know, we've got a bit of potential growth in here. We've got a few people that we can probably look to move on and get rid of. And, yeah, like anyone. As I, as I normally said, it'll be pretty much all of those people will be looking to move on uh, as soon as possible because we don't think they're going to make it. So, yeah, it's an, inter it's an interesting situation to be in. But um, it's going okay at the moment. Pre-season has just started. We've only played one friendly. We beat Primorak Biograd, who are our new feeder club. 1-0, uh, Cabrera getting the goal, which was nice to see. Stoyak playing and having a pretty good game um, in the middle of the park as well, but we are letting the assistants do that. Someone asked me, how do I get um, your director of football or assistant manager or head of youth development or whatever to do transfers for you? So one way you can do it is you can go to the director of football um, and you can ask them to suggest transfer targets and you can suggest what position you want. So you can go transfer... Uh, you can go, let's say, defence midfield, and let's uh, let's say we wanted a uh, midfield centre and we wanted a Mezzala. We can say suggest, and he would say, well, these are three people I think would improve the squad in the Mezzala role. So we've got David Bouvier in here um, from Guigomp, and then we've got Augusto Martins, who does look like he'd be pretty good, actually. Are you transfer listed? You are. Three, oh, 3.3 million. That could be... That could be an interesting uh, interesting shout. And then you've got Zoran Malinkovic as well, 18-year-old um, Serbian. And you can do that for, for director of football. The other thing you can do is if you go into staff, you can go into responsibilities. And you can go to do, do, do transfers incoming. Offer first team. No, where am I going? Um, I had it in here somewhere. 
Ah, find and make offers for players for your first team, Ian Allen. Find and make offers for young players for the future, Brett Higgins. So it doesn't necessarily mean you have to have them. Um, you don't have to accept all the people that they're going to offer to you, but they just go out and find other people for you. So you could change that, and you could change that if you wanted. It gives you all the options that are there, um, and then I'd just let Ian Allen's director of football do that. So this is where they go out and find players to, to bring in. Um, generally I let them go all the way through and then if I have a look at them generally when they find them I tell them my scouts to go and scout them and then when it goes through to contracts I let Ian Allen go and do the contract phases and then when I have to confirm it because the important one to do is make sure you're still doing both of these so that you're confirmed they're just not going to go off and sign and confirm and give away all your money to these people that you might not need so for example Ian Allen you are determined to sign us a new right midfielder according to we don't play with midfielders that's very strange but you're determined to buy us a new right midfielder um uh, so yeah I make sure I have these two selected on there uh, so that's how you do that was there anything else I need to say oh something a lot of people don't know if you go into your player search on foot 119 um, and something you can do, we were looking at obviously people that are expiring, if we could pick anyone up on a free transfer. But just for examples, these are all the people in the world of football that are interested to move to us. As you can see, it's quite a growing list now. We've got quite a good number of people um, interested to move to us. However, if you click on this little cog, you can change it from players that are interested to extremely interested. So you know you can get them pretty much 100% they'll, these guys will move to you and you can also change to like slightly interested so your list will be bigger but you can see you know how close you are to convincing these sort of people to go so default is on is always interested if I'm desperate to make a signing I'll go to basically to very interested so I know that I can bring them in um, so for example Angel from Southampton who's a fullback is is very interested to move to us um, I, we don't have that sort of money though so he won't be moving um, but yeah, it's a good little tool to have that not many people know. So if you found that interesting, why not leave me a like uh, on the video and let me know in the comments below that you didn't know that was there and that's that's very, very interesting. So um, that's, that's that. I just wanted to touch on that because I got a few questions. I know it's a delayed response, but um, I do eventually get round to answering all the questions that you ask me. But enough about that. Let's get into the Super Cup. Um, we've got uh, suspension in Veselinovic, so he's not going to be able to play. So Benkovic will come in. Uh, two and Zabi will go on to the bench. We have our substitute four um, not really around, which is Ledesma. So we'll put Vera on the bench for that one. Um, and I think this is how we're going to line up for it. It's going to be this formation here, well we know the formation it's going to be Mina in goal, Stoyanich, Benkovic Nathan and Kufle at the back Valencia, Gronli and Vicario, Guigon Cabrera and Simeonovic starting on the right wing uh, on the bench we have Areas up front, DeSantis as a winger, Vera and Stoyak and Tuan Zabi as defensive and then Suta is getting promoted to the first team this season, see if we can get him some game time um, as an inside forward up here, now he likes to be a wide target man but I'm hoping the training that we put him on will improve it. He's basically got pre-season to prove himself, and if he doesn't prove himself, he will be out of the door pretty quickly, because I'm quite ruthless like that, and he doesn't really offer us very much. Um, I've been keeping an eye and trying to sign everybody back in the Patreons. Uh, Ross, you are not interested at all, unless you're going to be coming back as our assistant manager, so you're being a bit greedy because you're trying to take Marco's job, and you're not going to get that because he's still a Patreon. I keep trying to offer you the under-19s manager. You have no interest whatsoever, so you never want to agree. And Gio, you are so determined to um, hijack Rieka from the inside that you don't want to come back and actually work for your favourite club in the world. You're so loving working with this manager and disrupting all his players and stuff that... Uh, yeah, you don't you don't want to. He is actually wanted by Leeds and Maribor. So if you if he leaves, you might come and join us again. So we'll keep an eye on that. So before we get into the game, we have number day. Um, Mina will still be our number one, even though Saul is probably the better goalkeeper nowadays. Um, Mina could be leaving. No one no one wants, he's wanted, but no one wants the matches. Actually, they're both wanted. You're wanted by some clubs, um, and Mina is wanted by one or two. Oh, quite a lot. Okay, well they have to. He's got an asking price, so they have to pay five million for him. Um, Mina's done nothing wrong, so I think he can keep the number one shirt for this season. 
Uh, starting right back will probably be Rad Stoyanich, although I think Ledesma this year will be pushing him quite close. Again, a youngster that wouldn't mind getting involved a bit more in the club. Um, Veselinovic will be starting at the back, but he won't be number three. Again, I'm leaning towards starting Kufre this year because he's left-footed, and that suits our formation so much better. So I think it will be Kufre. We'll give to number three. Obviously, we don't have Neymar to be 33 this year anymore. Uh, at the back, it will be Beth Veselinovic, although that should be... Number four, I think, is holding midfield, isn't it? Which would be Henry Valencia, and then we'll be Veselinovic and Nathan as a starting back centre or centre backs. Um, we have in midfield. Now this is where it gets interesting because technically it will be Vicario, and it will be it will more than likely be uh, where is he? There he is, Sigurd Gronley to start but we have we are very strong in central midfield um like that right wing starting will probably be Simeonovic more than DeSantis this year left wing will be Guigon and starting up front will be Cabrera and then everybody else is on the bench so um back up for number uh, number 11 back up right back will be Ledesma back up goalkeeper will be Saul um back up what's number four holding midfielder back up holding midfielder will be Anti Yurisev um backing up Centre backs will be Tuan Zabi, Benkovic, and then Napoli will be the next backup centre back at 25. Vera will then be 23 because the 13 shot assert goes to that. De Silva, he's not going to get a number because I think he's going to be sold. Same with Mikel Arejo. Um, he's had his minimum fee release clause met of 10 million by Bruce Munch and Gladbach, so he's probably going to be off. Stoyak will be a backup central midfielder with the number 18 shirt. Um, ben Amore will be back up with the number, uh, we can just give you 22 into this point. DeSantis will be number 17. Um, back up, left winger will be Alberto, he can get number 21. Back up strike will be Adias number 20. And Steve Rallis can get number 24. De Silva will probably be leaving, Arejo will be leaving, Suta will give you the number 26. And Cabrera is a new signing, but we're probably going to send him out on loan for this first season. Uh, not too sure. So that'll be the numbers for now. 25 players in the squad, which is very nice. Uh, a good number, but not. I'm not afraid to increase that number if we need to. So there we go. Lots of changes in the shirt numbers. Mina unchanged, Vera unchanged, Veselinovic and Stoyanich unchanged. Two and Zabi, Cabrera, Benamor and Napoli also unchanged as well. Everybody else sort of mixing the numbers up. So all the fans out there have to go and buy a new shirt with their new... Favourite player number on the back. Good ploy to get a bit more money. I don't know if that works, but why not? We'll think it does. Um, Josh De Silva doesn't need a fitness test, but he won't be playing in today's game. And let's get into it. It looks like we're going to be matching up in formation. Both teams playing a 4-1-4-1. Obviously, Rieka got the better of us in the, the final game, or the final game that we showed on camera last season in the cup final where they beat us 1-0. But we've had an okay record against them in the past. They've been one of the teams that we've sort of struggled against. They are a pretty good team. But uh, this is in pre-season. We don't know how fit everyone is. We've only played one pre-season game. Lots, quite a few people are away at the European Championships as well, which um, which is always not not very good. But we're going to go out there and say get some revenge. Revenge. Um, it'll be nice to have him, but we'll do with things best we can. I would consider us title favourites. Uh, I don't want to discuss injuries. I'm looking to play a free-flowing attacking game and let's get it underway. And they've, they've made a few signings. There's been a fair bit of money being thrown around in the Croatian League this year, which is interesting to see. Um, yeah, Dynamo have been splashing a bit of cash. Uh, hey Duke has splashed a little bit so far. Not, I mean, not talking multi-millions of pounds, but they've just bought in you know, a few players here and there and it's interesting to see it. Maybe they think they can mount a title challenge this year against the mighty Zagreb, but we'll have to find out. So throw in Kufle to take it, and Foss, that's easy for Foss to get to, but he only heads it back into Kufle. Valencia and Gronley playing their own little game in the centre of the park. Kufle, ball into the back post, but nobody's there. Simunovic will keep it alive, finds Stjonic. Stjonic into Valencia, shot blocked, and uh, Valencia can't get on the rebound. Vuk then comes forward, ball through the middle. That's pretty poor. If they're going to play those sort of long balls, we should be fine. Back of lads, it's a really poor pass. Gronley picks it up. Out to Guigan on the left-hand side. He's got big shoes to fill with Neymar retiring. Uh, Vicardio picks up. Valencia put under pressure. Gronley to Cabrera. Cabrera to Simeonovic. Simeonovic is back to Gronley. 
Got any good ball through to Simeone, which maybe we went for storage. Back post cross, and Grigon can't put it in. But, um, yeah, Neymar retired, became an under-19s coach at Zagreb, which is great. Uh, Firmino retired, only wanting to be a director of football. Obviously, we're not going to give him that role because we've got a Patreon doing that wonderfully well for us, and Ian Allen. Uh, so, yeah, Firmino gave up a shirt for Gary. Gronley shoots. Wow, what a finish. What a finish. An absolute bullet from the edge of the box. Look forward to seeing that one in 3D. That was a beaut. Kufre took the throw in into Cabrera, knocked it back to Kufre. Kufre then just dinked this into the box. It was cleared away pretty poorly. Vicario, first time, Gronley, top corner. Kafurik has no chance in net. 1-0 Zagreb. Stoinic into Simeonovic. Gronley to Vicario, spreading this play really well. We're just The way we move opposition players around is great. Kufre comes forward. Ball in Simeonovic. Oh, he's got to score that. He has got to score that. Heads it straight at... Um, uh, Klafriuk in goal and this is what we didn't want because we don't have a right back on the bench so I'm hoping uh, Stoyanich can recover knee injury so it might be a twisted knee yeah a twisted knee we should be able to play through it okay he has recovered quite well we'll leave him on for a little bit longer but uh, overall I'm happy so far with the first half you know team are playing how I want them to and it's going um, it's going quite well assertively I'm pleased let's not change it too much into the second half we go and um, we'll be back if there's any Right, goal mouth action, or just action in general, because likelihood is someone will get a sent off. Simeonovic put down the right-hand side, ball across, it's half cleared. Cabrera, Vicario, will he get his shot off? He does, it's blocked and goes out for a throw-in. Um, but obviously nothing else came from that. I'm just considering taking off Simeonovic for DeSantis in this game. So let's go for that, number 17 replacing number 7 which is uh, always good to see for a positional swap because I've got a little bit of OCD. So that's always good to see numbers as they should be on the pitch. Guigon also not playing very well on the left-hand side. Maybe we get... Let's give let's give the youngster a go. Simon Suter. I said he's got pre-season to impress. Let's see what we can do. Scoring goals for fun in the under-23s. Gronley has the corner. In it goes. It's part cleared. Cabrera turns shot. Clefuric smashed past him at the near post. We always knew Cabrera had a really powerful shot, but that is just that looked ridiculous. Grunley with a corner in. It was, a, again, poor clearance. Cabrera knocked down onto his right foot. And, uh, in my opinion, Klafurik really should be saving that. But it's 2-0, and uh, this is nice. But Stoinic injury has got the better of him. Now, Tuan Zavi is generally the man we bring on in this situation. So let's see if he can do all right there. Vicario, left-footed corner, and it goes. It's headed back to Vicario with a clearance. Ball in Suter! He's got pre-season to impress, and that is one way to do it. If you've got a player that prefers to be a wide target man, then he's going to be tall and he's going to be good in the air. It came in here. It came back to Vicario, and uh, he took that touch. No, not even the touch. First time left-footed. Suter, with a, that's a great header. And uh, fair play to the youngster. I've, I've put my arm around him before he came on. You need to impress. And Suter, oh, he nearly had a chance for two. He really should have got two goals there, I reckon. But uh, this is a this is, this is is a much better performance to start the season, isn't it? This is good. This is very nice. So a goal kick goes along. Kufle wins the head of Vicario. The poor touch that landed at the striker's feet. And Beldu puts it out. That's a really bad pass. So I think the pass would obviously gone to his head. Suter, Valencia, into Gronley. Back to Valencia. This is We keep the ball. We slow it down. And then, bam, we spread it. I mean, that's a poor pass. But it's the right idea. That's what we're sort of looking at as Pesnik into Beidou. Beidou to Foster. Foster to Saglanidzi. Saglanidzi, which is an interesting name to say. is That's a good save from Mina from the striker, who's also got a very interesting name to say. Kakana Bads. As Tuan Zabi just kicks Barilio from behind um, and obviously gets a yellow card for his troubles for doing that. So that's not the cleverest of things to do, Axel. Saglanidzi, ball in. Foster with a header. Mina with a save. Mina wants that clean sheet bonus today. It's interesting we don't... I'm, I'm impressed how... Well, I'm not impressed, but I'm concerned that we're not creating clear-cut chances, but I'd suggest we... Although, football managers are renowned for getting clear-cut chances and half chances wrong. Like, I don't know how Suter's header can't be classed as a clear-cut chance. It was a header from six yards out. So, in my mind, that's a clear-cut clear chance, but obviously not in football manager's mind. I don't know. Pesnik with a oh that's it I didn't even realise the time there we go a cracking three 0 win to get the Super Cup finally in our trophy cabinet um, even though the board weren't very interested in how we did um, in it it wasn't part of our big objectives for the season but we do win the Super Cup again but we win it properly this time with an actual win beating someone 
Um, a fine header from point blank range. How is point blank range not a clear cut chance? That's what annoys me. Stoinich is injured six to seven days with a twisted knee. That's well, Ledesma's going to be thrown in for the rest of uh, the rest of pre-season at right back when he comes back from international duty. Consecutive Super Cup wins. Uh, Cabrera on form, which was nice. Ninety-six percent of his passes completed. Very nice. And he is in the list for top goal scorer, nine to one. Now we didn't really have much interest in this list last time. We weren't getting people at the top of the list. Rob Atkinsy is someone we were scouting. He's actually got a bid on him. Who from? CSK in Moscow trying to stockpile Croatian strikers. And Skendrovic is, yeah, again, someone we were looking at. We were definitely looking at bringing him in. I think we're okay for strikers at the moment. Um, we've got a lot of players on our... A lot of players? We've got a lot of bids on our players. So it'll be interesting to see um, if anything happens with that. Now, we'll keep recording for a little bit longer. I don't think, from my point of view, I don't think there's going to be too many... Um, too much movement into the club. I don't think so. But uh, not too sure. The attendance at 8,000 in the Zagreb every record match is a new record low for the Croatia Super Cup. I would disagree with that. I would suggest that these two games that were never games had a lower attendance of zero. Um, but oh well, what can you do? At least we won it. Um, we got a good win. The, the finances are a little bit better now that we got a bit more money in from TV revenue um, and stuff like that. The facilities... Uh, we're due to move in on the 15th of the 6th, 2030, so roughly two years' time. We have a 10-year stadium sponsorship deal at 172k per season, which isn't very much, but it will do do pretty well for us at the moment. And, um, yeah, we'll have to see. I don't know if Zagreb, if the name Zagreb Stadium doesn't change and we haven't won the Champions League by the time we move into it, there is a way I can go into um, a .xml file and change the stadium name without using the editor because if I just go just to again just to show you guys uh, if I go to is it in preferences I think um, interface there's somewhere on here that it will say you know editor not used or something there's something around here I don't know there's something in here that says you can show game game status game st oh yeah in game editor allowed no there you go in game editor used no so there you go. You can see it from there how it is. You can also see that it doesn't use too much of my processor CPU. And I also have a new PC on the way, which is, uh, well, very exciting for me. So it should be delivered tonight. <laughs> but this video is going out three days after I record it, I think, because I've got to record some in advance. So uh, due to work commitments and stuff. So nobody wants to silver. Well, people do want to silver. Uh, they're not giving us reasons as to why not. They want Stoic on. No, he's. Why would I be loaning you my starting right back? Get a life. Um, De Silva's time at the club is very much up. He's transfer listed. All these teams want him on transfer. We're just going to let them bid when they want to bid. I ideally want about a million pounds for him. Um, whether we get that, I don't know. That's a question for another day, I'd suggest. So the scouting team have come back and found a guy called Pedro Paolo, and he looks very, very tasty. However, it would cost us £10.25 million, which is um, a little concerning. But when you look at him as a Mazala on attack, other than finishing, he's pretty damn decent. Passing is great. Technique, great. Vision, great. Decisions, great. Good natural fitness to get up and down. Stamina, balance, acceleration. It's just that finishing, which is why he wants to be on support. He's wanted by um, Palmeres, that is, and Celta Vigo. Maybe we'll just add him to the short, just to keep an eye on, see if anyone else makes a bid on him. Uh, so, Alios Bamba, who used to play for us and we sold for a million pounds, got released on a free by Porto, but he's rejected us uh, and moved to Hamburger in Germany. Probably makes sense for him, slightly better uh, better team in there. Um, as long as you want Ledesma, no, he's our backup right back for the season at the moment. Uh, Kotev can go on loan. He's not really progressed as we want him to. I reckon if he was in our starting 11 maybe a couple of seasons ago, he would have done well, but yeah, he's never really, really pushed on. Did okay for Inter Sopreski in the last in last season, um, in the first leg, but he's going to go and test himself in Slovenia and we'll see how he progresses. Now, I still am thinking about bringing in some older heads for mentoring and stuff like that. I think the effect of Neymar and Bobby Firmino at the end of last season were, were quite good. 
Um, so I am looking around for maybe an older head to bring on in a, on a backup deal. The issue we've got at the moment, where our finances have been hit quite bad because of the stadium, um, and we're paying back a monthly loan fee as well, is that our ability to offer big contracts has dropped off dramatically, is a, is a good way to say it, I think. As Pericles, see, this is someone I really want to bring in, but we don't have the financial muscle to, to bring him in. He'd be absolutely brilliant for us. I was uh, probably a complete forward on support, to be honest. That's how I would use him. But, yeah, he's going to move to a big club, I think. Red, Red Bull Leipzig, it looks like, at the moment. But, yeah, so we're lacking in terms of age. I think our average age of the squad is, like, 24, which, yeah, is fine. We just might need to get in some older heads to support the other players um, while they're in here. Let's clear this so that I, we don't just keep picking the same team for the friendlies. And, um, yeah, I think we're going to leave the episode there. And I think we'll actually be back for the... League game and then deadline day like we did uh, last time. I don't think this, as I said, I don't think this transfer window warrants a transfer window episode. I don't think that much is going to happen. There will be some outs, I think, but I don't think in terms of bringing them in, there's going to be a lot of players coming in. Because I'm happy with the squad and I'm happy that we've got um, under 19 players that we can that we can call up and use. So if we actually search by ability. So Zelinka, the goalkeeper, Eddie Alvarez can come in, Canino, Holst. Castilic, uh, Mohamedy, all of these players can can come in and do a job as well. So, yeah, I don't know. Famous last words, I guess. After all, when we come back together, I'll have made 20, 30 new signings or something like that for loads of money. But thank you so much for watching, guys. We'll be back for the first game of the new league season uh, in the next episode, which will be next week, I think, when this one is released. So thank you so much for watching. For now, I'm out. Cheers.